My name is Katie Schuetz, and I have started the inner source programs for both Indeed and Analog devices. Till recently, I was at Analog, and I'm on the board of directors here at Inner Source Commons. So today, I am going to um, dive into some of the topics around building trust with teams and how we can use documentation to do that. And we talk about code for inner source and how we are inner sourcing code. And we're also creating transparency with our um, documentation as well. And we want to make our code discoverable and documentation assists with that. So high quality documentation is what can build trust, trust across our teams. It will show that Ultimately, people know what they're doing and it answers questions. So the first thing that we want to make sure our documentation does is um, answer questions so that people don't have to keep reaching out. Every time someone reaches out to your team, it takes up extra time and it takes away from individuals being able to work on their own projects and even takes away time from them contributing to your projects. So it also, on the same stream, speeds up the onboarding process and it makes sure that people know that they're um, that what they're working on is current, is valid, is um, and is actively maintained. So it helps them learn their environment faster. And it provides transparency. It inner source is all about being open, open planning and open code, open documentation. And most importantly, as I said before, it builds respect. It shows what you know, what you're doing. And this goes, why do we need trust? It cannot be more stated, we need community. And our community is only created when we have trust and when people are um, engaged with each other. If you don't trust your next door neighbor, are you going to go over and have a conversation with them and help them with a project? It's the same across our organizations and with Intersource. So we have to remember that the person who wrote the code will not be the only person to touch it. And we've heard other people speak today about... Um, the community being um, the ones that contribute to the code and people not thinking of themselves as sole owners. And that is very true. We need to make it so that it is a, a community-based projects. And we want people to contribute to the code quality, the code to improve the quality. We want other people to know that their hard work will be maintained. And we are making our code high quality so that we can reuse it. We want teams to build long lasting relationships. Our teams are, um, we have a cultural norm right now across organizations to find a way to get something done quickly and find find the easiest route, not necessarily put the work in to make it reusable, but that first step will save a lot of time. And that's why our documentation is so important is because it will help us to save time in the long run. It will help others reuse our code. And we need trust in order to do this. So we're facilitating long-term relationships by having good documentation. And this will also help with sustaining contributors and getting trusted committers to join your project. We have an entire company full of people and a full of talent. And every person in your organization was hired to solve a problem. Every person is brought in to overcome boundaries and overcome hurdles. So we need to make documentation easy for them so that we can build this trust. 
because they're just going to find a way around it unless we provide them with simple resources. And we need those simple resources to build community. Um, documentation is there. It depends on your where you're at. Um, we need to think about who our users are and what do you think they'll need. Some teams might not have regular meetings that they need to make records of. They might not have blogs, but other teams those that are focused more on documentation rather than code, those might, might be more important. But it is a, a it's an opportunity to look at what documentation needs to be in your repo. And in at Intersource Commons, there is a pattern around base repo documentation, and it includes the um, contributing.md, your readme, and a communications MD document. All three of these are important for getting information about the project and the people involved out to your contributors and giving them a good place to start. As your team finds other base documentation, this, this may change for you and, and the people you're working with because everyone's needs are different. But making, it, making all of these things discoverable, there are other um, wide ranges of documentation that may be specific to um, individual organizations and not, um, not as generalized. But there are some simple changes that we can look at. Make sure the documentation exists. This is a thing, if you go into a lot of repositories, you may not see a readme or it might have three lines and those three lines might not be very useful. I have seen some that say, this is a project. And that is what they put there to get the document in place. This is not particularly helpful, but at least it exists. Uh, the intersource, um, your intersource program office is there to help teams get these um, things in place and to create high quality documentation. So that is the time where you can help teams make a plan to keep it current and maintained. Um, you can add documentation that answers all of the users frequently asked questions. This also helps cut down on the number of times somebody's going to contact you and ask a question, and it will save time on both of your ends. Um, allow your users documentation and keep, to keep it updated. You can have someone submit a pull request on your documentation that will help keep it updated. If a new contributor sees something in a contributing.md that is um, incorrect or maybe slightly outdated, they might be able to contribute to it and correct it just based on their own experience. And that is one less step of a verification process that you need to go through as an individual or you'll know what to go and look at and verify. Um, this is also the time to make it discoverable. There is all sorts of documentation and in some companies you might have Google Drive, you might have a wiki, you might have um, a confluence, which is different than your wiki. You might have um, additional shared files and drives and there's permissioning that goes around it. So we want to make sure that you have a, that our teams have a plan in place to keep that documentation open and available to anyone who needs it. And some teams have, um, security requirements. So some documentation might only be able to be visible to a certain segment of the organization overall. And that's okay. Have that security plan and that documentation plan in place to put documentation in the correct location from the beginning. Uh, 
This is also the time where you figure out where you want to put meeting notes. Maybe it's in a GitHub repository. Maybe it's in a, um, a shared drive, but make it searchable. And the organization, keeping it organized, reduces clutter, and it keeps people from getting overwhelmed by the quantity. Oh. <laughs> Add metadata at the top of your document to show it's current and maintained. This is, it's a new practice for a lot of organizations, but for um, groups at both analog devices and at Indeed, it worked well, was putting a, um, putting a tag in certain types of documentation that show it as if it was a draft, final, or archived. And then in all of our GitHub documentation, we had metadata that included a title, what the document was, a topic was about, and a verified by day for the, um, and a verified by name. And this allowed everyone to see that documentation was up to date and current. And we asked all teams to keep it verified on a quarterly basis. This allowed everyone to have some more trust in it and it reduced the need to ask a lot of those extra questions because people were able to see that it had been recently looked at. Um, who can drive this change? It's different at different companies. There is no one true way. And for analog devices, they had a um, technical writing team that spearheaded a lot of this change. And we also looked for guidance from program management and who needed high-level leadership um, buy-in. At Indeed, they had guilds and they had volunteer teams that um, took ownership of unmaintained projects and checked on their documentation. So it is different from any organization, but high level leadership is needed anywhere. It doesn't matter where documentation teams, volunteers, groups exist, but the leadership is key, mid-level and high-level initiatives. And you need to establish the importance of intersource because documentation is a key component of intersource. It's not just about code, it's about documenting the code. So documentation is not necessarily a very um, hard metric. A lot of leaders look at analytics that are of the technology and the coding and not necessarily the people side of the documentation. And showing your users the importance of answering people's questions and importance of just having documentation. Doesn't matter which team this is coming from, because anyone can drive this change as long as they have backing from leadership and have the ear of the people they need. Some common concerns. These are things that you hear teams say, and that's it's how they push back. Documentation takes too much time. I don't want to do it. I need to get my coding done. Well, if you can tell them, if you invest time now, and you we'll spend less time clarifying that same information over and over and over for other people on many other teams. This is where it takes a couple of minutes. When someone asks a question, you go into an FAQ document and you go down the line and you put, um, how do I do X, Y, Z? And you write an answer to it and you show at the top, you adjust the metadata, say it's been re-verified by on this date and it helps your users. You can set up templates so that uh, documentation is standardized and this is 
um, anything from a um, from change log templates to um, requests for comments or um, PR templates. These can be uh, user guide templates. Inner source commons patterns already include quite a few of these. And this could also go as far as um, trusted committer documentation and, and trusted committer handbooks that are outlined so that teams want to participate in inner source and have that documentation available. Um, and you can tell people it indicates to other users that you know what you're doing. Uh, how will we ever keep it up to date? Create a documentation plan, have a maintenance plan, and have a feedback mechanism so that when people have suggestions, they can either submit a pull request, maybe they don't have access to that particular location, so they have a way to send feedback. It is a form, a Slack inbox. It's variable to whoever needs it. And we have too much documentation is overwhelming. It doesn't need to be a big blob. Make it searchable. Earlier today, we heard about the new project that is now being open sourced and available to create searchability. So we have open source projects that can um, assist with this. And what comes next? There is always an unspoken concern. If we have lots of documentation, people will actually poke around and they'll get involved in projects. Teams can be very protective and very, have a lot of ownership of their projects and don't want to share and have others involved. And this is a culture change that needs to happen. And it can start with documentation. You can build trust by showing that your project is open and the code is accessible, that you want people to know about it. You're opening, you're ultimately opening your home. You're opening the code so that the host team is welcoming to others and you're encouraging the poking around, but that that is the start of a whole nother story. And that is where culture change comes in and you can start documenting how culture needs to change. This is where the inner source team's own documentation is important because it's not just the code. It's when people look for resources around inner source and how you can um, give people resources so they can start their own culture change. And create that discoverability and get conversations started. And that's what I have. If there are any questions, I would like to open it up.